What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and it's been over three years since Glorious originally released the GMMK Pro keyboard, which took the market by storm. But here we are with the brand new GMMK3, a new pro wireless gaming keyboard, Hall Effect switches, Rapid Trigger, and the craziest customization I've ever seen on a keyboard before. This is going to be a big one. So checking it out with this being their pre-built custom GMMK3, this marks the launch of their new models that can either be bought bare bones, a stock pre-built, or like we have here, a completely custom config that they build for you with my Punk Red Wireless Hall Effect unit. And we'll check this out in just a second, don't worry. But as you see, they say there's actually a billion different customization combos available for your build with Boardsmith. Boardsmith lets you customize your GMMK3 from the layout, available in a new 65% model, the 75, or a full-sized, I went with 75%, you know, best of both layouts. Choose between either wired or a wireless board, whether you want the board to have just standard MX switches or go Hall Effect on your model, that's at the PCB level. Then some of the physical personalization, like the different colors and materials for both the top and bottom cases. The cases are full CNC aluminum metal, but they also launched these new EXO cases to have a cool transparent retro look. I'm definitely gonna wanna pick up an EXO purple unit in the future. But for this model today, I did go all the punk red. Next up, you pick your switches. They have six different Hall Effect switches to choose from, or if you didn't choose Hall Effect earlier, you'll get the MX options instead. We'll check out the switches in more detail in the review portion of this video in a few minutes, but six different Hall Effect switches is pretty cool. You can pick your keycaps from some of the more limited edition sets to their basic colors or like their gradient lineup, uh, polychroma, their pudding keycaps, pretty much their whole selection of keycaps here. And then some accent pieces like the badge and the knob on the top right. These also available in a bunch of different colors. Pick the cable that you want. And then this is where it gets even more interesting. When the original GMMK Pro launched, we had just an aluminum plate, but now you have five different options to pick from with two aluminum colors, a polycarbonate plate, FR4, and brass. So each will obviously affect the feel and the overall sound of the board as well. So I like the different materials here, more the merrier. And lastly, your gaskets. Yeah, you can even customize your gaskets between a flex or a fur material to change the type feel. And then just like that, we have our custom GMMK Pro 3 wireless Hall Effect keyboard for a whopping $501 price tag. Which brings us to my model here live in person. And obviously while that price is just for this particular setup, yours can be dramatically cheaper depending on your configuration. In fact, they start as low as 120. But turning it on, this punk red 75% board really pops in person with the added benefits of it being wireless and having Hall Effect switches. But we'll take a closer look now because there's a lot to go over today and we're already three minutes and five seconds in. First, as I said, going with the 75% layout, which is very familiar. And for those who had in the original GMK Pro, we have things like full RGB lighting still with the side glow integration, a case that's more rounded on the edges versus that more blocky case from the first model. And personally, I think it gives it more of a modern look now. And for some other physical features, you have an LED accented magnetic badge with our rotary encoder or dial on the top right of the board. On the backside, some differences since we now have the wireless model, obviously, like the power and 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth connection switch, and then the Mac and PC toggle to switch the modifier keys with the USB-C port dead center. Another big difference is the fact that there aren't any exposed screws on the frame. Now we have just four total screws on the bottom underneath the removable feet versus the eight exposed screws on the frame last time, making this really easy to open up for mods or swapping out some internals if you want to change things up and you may never even need to open yours, but we're still gonna take a look inside to see what's going on. And right away, I spotted a few differences, but also some welcome changes. Underneath is still a dampening pad, although this feels much more like a thicker piece of styrofoam versus that thin EVA sheet we had in the original model. This is also helping pad the bottom of the PCB against the bottom of the case inside. The expanded daughter board in the middle connects to a 3000 milliamp hour battery and runs through a channel cutout to connect to the PCB, which all sits nicely together as it's mounted on the new gasket strips inside, which is one of the first major internal differences. The original GMK Pro was more of a dated gasket method by today's standards, with these very thin strips that sandwich the PCB between both frames, where here we have much thicker removable pads, 10 total that lets the plate and PCB rest on these bigger strips. 
as well as O-rings integrated into the four spots where the screws go underneath and where the top and bottom frame connect. These really are just O-rings, and they do slightly help kind of seal that top and bottom frame together and cuts down on that metal to metal contact overall, but it's these hybrid gaskets that I'm really liking. If you remember from the Boardsmith configurator, I chose the Flex Gaskets, which is both silicone and foam integrated into the pad here, which is going to help give more balance to the plate when you're typing due to both materials, versus the other option of the Firm Gasket that would be just silicone, so that would provide less balance and would feel more firm. These I feel are the way to go and are a good complement to a more flexible plate like I have with the polycarbonate plate in my setup, which has just four screws if you want to swap plates in the future. Nice and easy. You can also see a layer of foam sandwiched between the plate and PCB for added dampening. And even though we went with our Hall Effect config, you'll note the PCB still has hot swap sockets underneath. And this is actually pretty cool because if you want, you can also use MX style three or five pin switches in your board along with the Hall Effect switches. That's pretty interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that before where you can actually use both options together at the same time. Now, when I first got this in and started using it, one of the first things I noticed was the amount of audible rattle. At first, I thought it was the tolerance of the keycap stems not being firmly mounted onto our switches, but it's actually the switches themselves. These are the Hall Effect Lynx standard switches, and as you can see, they definitely have some play and wiggle inside the plate. Now that's for two reasons. Again, with them being Hall Effect, they aren't mounted by the three or five pins into the PCB like a standard mechanical switches. In fact, they're not mounted to the PCB at all. So that's definitely a big part of it. The bottom of the switch is flat and just uses the contactless magnets. That's kind of the trade off here with magnetic switches, you know, no contact with the PCB that would wear out over time. But also, just naturally with this polycarbonate plate, which is going to be a thinner, less dense material, that's not going to have as tight of a tolerance with these cutouts versus something like a brass plate would. Due to the nature of this review being very obviously partial to my experience with my particular setup and build with my model, yours could vary greatly depending on the parts and components that you pick for yours that could also greatly alter the overall feel and sound of your board as well. So keep that in mind. But I am going to have a massive unboxing video soon going over and checking out other options like different switches, plates, and so on. So be on the lookout for that. Now, one quick thing before we move on, if you take a look under the space bar, there is a cutout and an exposed chip. This is the wireless antenna. And while I don't love the idea of exposed circuitry being like a few millimeters under the space bar where a spilled cup of water could easily get to it, I believe the idea is that since there's less materials in the way of the antenna, the wireless connection strength is going to be stronger since a block of aluminum isn't interfering with it. And that's why a lot of times as well, you'll see keyboards have a metal top frame and then a plastic bottom base just so there's less interference with the materials for that wireless connection. Now, while we're on the topic of things that I'm meh about, I'm not putting those keycaps back on this board. They are a double shot PBT, so they feel fine, but these Pixel Punk keycaps in particular don't look how I thought they would. On the configurator, they looked like black and red. They had a nice contrast, but in person, it is definitely like a light gray and the red just looks washed out. So I'm gonna be adding a set that I think is gonna look killer on here, GMK Redline. I've had this for a while now, been itching to use them. Maybe you like the look of the Pixel Punk keycaps. I just want to go with something that I think is visually going to make the keyboard pop even more, which I think these do by adding that needed contrast with some of the red accents to the characters as well. Now, having filmed this after not using the original GMK Pro for a minute, one thing that I overlooked initially is the bottom row. Here we have two of the 125U modifiers to the right of the spacebar with the blocker there, whereas it used to be three of the 1U keys here. So we do lose out on a function, but also like not really. Okay, so now that we have our board all back together, we're gonna do a sound test. You could hear how this sounds with those Link standard Hall Effect switches inside of our polycarbonate plate.
eh, I'm not really loving the sound of it. It's definitely not like a satisfying sound. But again, I think the big reason behind that is because the switches moving so freely in the polycarbonate plate here it gives them more of like a high pitch sort of uh, clack to it and not in a good way either. Now, this was entirely stock and unmodded, of course, with the exception of swapping keycaps. And believe me, I did my own test. If you're worried about the sound of Glorious' own PPT keycaps versus the GMK Redline keycaps that I have here, there is zero audible difference. That didn't affect or impact the sound of this at all. And for the stabilizers, also eh. These are Glorious' own pre-lubed plate mount stabilizers. You can also swap these out with your very own. And it also does support screw-in stabilizers with the plate and PCB. But the biggest reason these are so loud, I think, is because if you take a look, the bottom of the stem from each stabilizer is just smashing against the PCB, obviously creating a higher pitched plastic noise. Something like a foam pad on the PCB or a Band-Aid mod would have gone a long way here from Glorious because after just a few minutes of using this, it was very, very annoying and apparent. Okay, now for the boring part, but very important, this software with the new Glorious Core. This is how you can configure the rapid trigger, the Hall Effect switches, all that. So checking out Core, this is where you can change everything up, starting with your pulling rate and your input latency. Wired, this can go up to 8,000 hertz pulling rate. Although if you are using this with the Hall Effect switches, wirelessly, it is limited to just the 1,000 hertz here. But yes, 8K hertz wired, 1K hertz wirelessly. Next up for the RGB lighting, nothing really new or crazy here. You have obviously a bunch of built-in RGB lighting effects, change the speeds, the brightness of the lights. But one thing I always liked that Glorious did is show the actual effect real time on the screen there so you can see how the effect's actually gonna look. I can dig that. Then we have the key bindings tab where you can change what each key does, like different functions and stuff. Again, rebinding isn't anything interesting. So where that all changes is to the actuation tab, letting you customize each switch's actuation point and reset point, since again, we have Hall Effect switches. Adjustable from 0.1 millimeters all the way to 3.7 millimeters or four millimeters if you wanna bottom out. If you want to take it even further, enable the rapid trigger setting, which lets you set the actuation point, trigger sensitivity, and then the release sensitivity. So you have so much flexibility, letting you actuate the key numerous times, all within a single keystroke. You can set the rapid trigger to be either per key or set it to the entire board. And there's no real need to have it on a per key basis. So I would keep it on the global settings that rapid trigger applies to everything. You know, why not? Unless you frequently like fat finger other keys or something. Now, one thing I would recommend doing is enabling that sort of hidden actuation tab there with the little eye icon. That's off by default, but keep it on because that physically shows you like when you're pressing on a key in real time, the level and distance of how you're actuating a certain key switch. So keeping that on is gonna let you see that, which is gonna give you a, you know, a better understanding and a more accurate representation of how far you're pressing down a key. It's definitely useful to have that so you can get used to these Hall Effect switches. And then lastly, over in the advanced keys section, this is where you can make individual keys have certain use for advanced gameplay. We have a dynamic keystroke, which lets you do four things at once. Mod tap, like we've seen on the wooden keyboards that enable two different functions, depending on whether a key is tapped or held down. And then a toggle key switch function, but it's between the mod tap and the dynamic keystroke that I would mess around with if I were you. Dynamic gives you the ability to have four different actions to a single keystroke. Each action marked by when you first actuate it, past a certain point, your release, then when the switch resets. So each a different function, and it's not limited to rebinding to just another key. It can be a modifier key, a mouse click, numbers, functions, you name it. So just to show you guys real quick, when I press down Z, I'm gonna set it to first be Z. When I bottom out the stroke, it'll be O. My release will be I. Then when it fully resets up top, it'll be D. So in theory, when I press Z, it'll say Zoid. This is just a random example I know, but you can see when I press the Z key, I'm getting four different letters per press. I can also just lightly tap it and have ZD, since I'm not going all the way down to where I set it where it's gonna bottom out, and then that reset marker for the OI functions, so I can just get a ZD with a light press. And to show it off very slowly, so you can see how each key registers, depending on the depth of my keystroke, just to give you a real-time example of how this works with their dynamic keystroke setting, it's definitely pretty interesting. 
Now for like MMOs or MOBAs, I can definitely see those things being more useful where you need to get off these, you know, rapid effects in real time pretty much. And again, you could also use modifiers. So you can do, you know, shift, control, all this sort of stuff in combination with just one key. Not necessarily gonna be super helpful for like an FPS game, I'd say, but still very cool nonetheless. Definitely just take time to get used to this stuff because even just a rapid trigger switch in itself is gonna take time for you to actually learn the different feel and just to get used to that. So take the time to learn these and you'll benefit from it for sure. But speaking of gaming, yeah, this felt very fast with the combo of 8,000 hertz, the 0.1 millimeter actuation distance that it's capable of, especially with rapid trigger. It does feel wild. Now again, because I've said it before, I play to have fun in my downtime. I'm not gaming competitively. I'll enjoy some Battlefield 1 or 5 when I can. So I'm not even necessarily pulling off these crazy run, jump, dive straights that people do in Apex and stuff, but it does feel really good and quick during use. And I didn't notice a significant hit to my CPU usage as well with the 8,000 Hertz setting. So no issues with that, no issues with lag when gaming wirelessly. The rapid trigger tech is done right here. Now I know on the original GMMK Pro, um, that was something like 25 milliseconds latency, which no one seemed to notice, let's be real, until the ratings published their review a few months after that. And then people began their hive mind fake uproar. But as you saw in core, you can adjust it to as low as two milliseconds. But I will be doing further latency tests and unique speed switch tests. That should be pretty cool for the community and these reviews going further. I'm just finishing up some of the methodology on my end. However, I am gonna reiterate a point that I brought up three times now that the shift and wobble to the keys just really bothers me. So let's bring up the cons now, and I think that's what bothers me the most. But again, that's gonna be a natural trade-off for going Hall Effect, although they just seem so much more loose than other Hall Effect keyboards that I've used. So be on the lookout for that unboxing video where I'm gonna check out other plates and switches. I'm gonna test other configs and see if they're loose as well. Uh, next, my OCD is just screaming internally because the knob is slightly off-center with the frame cut out. It shouldn't bother me as much as it does, but here we are. And then I think the obvious one here is gonna be the price of $500 for this specific configuration. Now again, yours can be dramatically less than that depending on the options you go with in Boardsmith or if you buy it bare bones. But the starting prices, especially if you look at the Hall Effect market with the other like main competitors out there with Razer and SteelSeries, for example, just comparing like starting prices for the feature set, that is very, very competitive. So again, $500 is crazy unrealistic. Yours can be much cheaper. And then for the pros, Boardsmith is super unique. But the fact they give you the option to customize nearly every aspect of the board with so many different components is really unique and cool. Like something I didn't even show you guys, but if you do just the MX Switch PCB, you can pick whether you want the PCB to be north or south facing. Like where else can you pick a PCB layout like that? Nowhere. Next, the rapid trigger ability at 8K Hertz with mod tap and the four action dynamic stroke is really unique and could be a game changer if you can take advantage of that. And then lastly, the efforts Glorious went through to improve the build of the board from the first model is definitely apparent. The board is made better. The gaskets integrations, the different plate options, all are so much better than the previous GMMK Pro. So at the end of the day, the feature set here on the new GMMK3 with the Hall Effect model is very impressive for what they offer starting, as I've said numerous times, at a much more affordable price tag in the boards with configurator, or if you wanna go bare bones, anything like that. I would not pay $500 for this. In, in fact, I would change it, I would completely change this up. I would go wired instead of wireless. I would get different keycaps. I definitely wanna check out the Exo Shell. So that would be probably less than half of what this costs. And at that price point, it would definitely be worth it. I'm just really gonna stress here that usually when I'm doing reviews, I like to have a definitive you know, answer in my reviews, whether I like it or not. And it's just so hard to say with the nature of this review being so uh, personal to the pieces that I picked and configured here, yours can be vastly, vastly different in pretty much every single way on this keyboard and can be a fraction of the price. So guys, that'll wrap it up for my review of the brand new glorious Jim K3 with my 75% wireless Hall Effect model here. Hope you all enjoyed. 
Like I said before, I also have a massive unboxing video, a bunch of accessories. Check that out if you want to see how they all go together and how these pretty much changes up the board with different plates and switches. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter or social media at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.